Welcome back to another Feed Scroll Generator tutorial for Autodesk Inventor. This time we're looking at two things we didn't cover in any previous uh, tutorial videos so far, which is in V2 of the app we can actually get the bottles to move towards the shaft axis or away from the shaft axis as they move along the shaft. We'll be covering that and also how we can potentially group together two or more bottles as they're moving along the shaft. So if we want these two bottles to stay linked effectively as they move along the shaft and perhaps even rotate one clockwise and the other county uh, counterclockwise or something like that. And we're going to be doing both of those things in this video. So just to ruin the suspense a little bit, the method that we use to group the, uh, the bottles together as they move along the shaft is actually to create two separate shafts, one for, for, the, for the root of each bottle. And then using the standard inventor combine tool, we actually intersect those two shafts together to produce one resultant shaft that actually has the roots for both bottles um, cut away from it. So it sounds a little more complex than it actually is. Hopefully you'll see this as we, uh, as we dive into it. So um, let's hit the generate button here. And the first thing we're going to do is to actually change the shape of the bottle. Um, I'm going to edit the bottle shape down here. And I'm going to get rid of this extra bottle, which was for illustration purposes only. And uh, we're just going to use an elliptical bottle shape here just for the sake of speed, although we could draw a bottle shape of any, any shape that we want. Let's draw the size of this bottle. finish the sketch and hit accept and generate and hit yes. Okay and we also want the bottle to move outboard let's say as it moves along the shaft so let's just change a few of these uh, dimensions for the shaft. I want the shaft to be much fatter so that I have some room for maneuver and here we're actually going to tick this box to vary the bottle distance from the center of the shaft going to start at say 75 millimeters from the center of the shaft uh, for the, on the diameter and we'll end at the OD of 160. So you can see the preview updates. These lead in and lead out numbers are important here. I want the um, bottle to stay at 75 mil diameter um, for let's say 200 millimeters. Let's see if I can actually type that correctly. 200 millimeters and I want it to reach the outboard um, the the end diameter let's say 300 millimeters from the end of the shaft so we see now we've got quite a rapid movement outwards um, and uh, the start and the end pitch of the bottle are obviously important we need enough space to fit two of these bottles in if we're grouping them together so I probably ought to make that a bit bigger at the start in fact we might need it even bigger than this simulation will help us with that later on and let's maybe set the end pitch to be 200 so we've got plenty of space although as we're going to be rotating this bottle we can probably get away with a lower pitch at the end and a higher pitch at the start and we'll be simulating to check that this makes sense um, okay and we'll have the bottle pitch changing pretty much straight away let's say 80 millimeters into the shaft the bottle pitch is going to start changing and we want the bottle pitch to have reached its final value let's say 120 millimeters before the end of the shaft um, we're going to include some rotation as well so we're producing a nice complex shaft here the start rotation of the bottle is zero remember we can type in any number there and we can see a preview of what the shot the start rotation of the bottle we want to be is Okay, and uh, we want the end rotation to be 90 degrees here. Um, how, far how far along does the bottle want to go before it starts rotating? Well, let's, let's, uh, let's give the bottle plenty of a chance to rotate. So it's going to start rotating 50 mil from the start of the shaft, and it's going to end its rotation, let's say, um, well, 
let's say 50 mil from the uh, from the end of the shaft as well. Or maybe we're going to need a bit more room in there actually. So let's say 80 mil from the end of the shaft. Um, let's just check our options. Fastest processing. Let's do a preview build on the lowest accuracy here, just to check uh, the settings we've applied. So let's hit preview build. Now it's going to be difficult for us to see if any of the bottles are going to clash because we're going to be grouping them together. So we won't really see that until we intersect both shafts that we're going to build together. But uh, So let's, we don't need to be concerned about this extra slice out here. We can simply hit simulate and get a, a rough idea of what's going on. Let's just save this part. Let's call it group example 1. So this is, you know, simply just for uh, checking purposes, really. It's a sanity check. So the bottle starts here. It's going to rot start rotating, move outboard, and finish its rotation there. Okay, remember we're going to have two bottles side by side grouped together. So we don't necessarily want them to be much closer than this together. Okay, so let's just head back to the part file. I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit generate. And I definitely do want to load the settings from the active model there. And I'm going to use a low, quite a low accuracy here. Let's say three, sort of mid, mid accuracy really. Three millimeter grid will be fine. Uh, I've illustrated using a higher accuracy in, in one of the other tutorials. So let's keep the bottle nice and simple. We can, we can drag this slider down because it is a simple bottle and let's hit smooth build. So as we're doing this, um, you might think that we have to wait until the end and then go and build the second shaft that we're going to intersect with this first shaft, but actually we can save this shaft off because we've already saved it as group example one, and then we can open another session of Inventor, which is what I'm going to do now, open group example one and simply tick the reverse bottle rotation tick box here and generate it again and we'll get exactly the same shaft both of them will be generated simultaneously and one will be rotating clockwise and the other will be rotating anti-clockwise and we won't have to wait for uh, both of them to be generated in series so let's hit open let's um, let's actually take a copy of group example one so I'm going to um, copy that and I'm going to paste it so I'm going to call this group example one reverse and then let's open this copy that we just took. So two sessions of Inventor running now. You might be able to hear my fan working hard uh, as I'm, as I'm pushing, in, uh, pushing my laptop a little bit more. So let's hit generate here. And you see we've got all our settings saved. All we need to do is to hit reverse bottle rotation. See we get an indication here of which way the bottle is going to rotate. And, uh, and we can simply just, well, make sure that we've got the same setting for accuracy, ideally, um, and bottle complexity. And we can, um, we can hit smooth build. Let's just double check all these settings are correct. They look the same to me, so I'm going to hit smooth build now. And we're building so both uh, both shafts side by side. So um, I'm going to pause the video now, as we've already seen these shafts built. I might unpause it when there's uh, when you can see the actual surfaces being built in a minute. Rotating in a clockwise direction here on this reverse shaft, and if I switch over to the other session of Inventor that we have going, Ah, that one's already completed. Okay, so we can see that the bottle's rotating anti-clockwise here in this uh, shaft. So let's just save my group example one shaft. We can maybe hit simulate on that. While the reverse shaft's still being built. And there we go. So we've got the bottle rotating here. And the shaft, the bottles moving together as they get towards the end. So that's uh, first shaft doing doing fine. Let's head back over to the reverse shaft. OK, 
Okay, we can see that one's nearly finished now. And uh, the, bo the bottle, as you can see, is rotating the other direction as it moves along the shaft. Okay, there we go. Um, looks like about sort of four or five minutes to create each shaft. Let's say OK and let's save this reverse shaft here. Now what I like to do if I'm merging or grouping two shafts, just so that you can clearly see what's going on, is to actually find the solid body of one of them, or both of them, and change the colour of it. So I've found the solid body here. If I set the colour of this to be something else, um, well, it doesn't really matter what colour. It's fine, it's steel blue. Okay, and let's save that one. And then let's, uh, let's go and open the other shaft. So that's called group example one. Let's just make sure group example one is saved. Let's head back to our other session of Inventor. So we had two sessions of Inventor running. Now we're just having one session. I'm going to go and open the uh, group example one shaft. I'll do the same. I'll change the color of the solid body in this one by selecting it in the browser there just choosing a different colour. Okay, I'll hit save on that. Okay, so now what I want to do is to effectively assemble the other shaft into this shaft. So we use the uh, derive tool for that. So if I hit derive, I want to find the reverse shaft and assemble it in here effectively inside a single part file. I don't want the sketches, I just want the finished scroll body. I don't really need the bottle body as well, so I'll turn that one off. And I'm going to say OK and Yes. And there we've got the two shafts on top of each other. Now it'd be no good merging them at this point because I need to uh, I need to have the bottles side by side. So what I need to do is actually move the body of the second shaft. So if I hit this modify tab here and hit move bodies. Let's find the second body in here, the one we just imported, and we want an offset in the Y direction. Now I'm not in exactly sure what the offset we want to be using here is for the for the Y direction. Let's try an offset of, uh, well in fact let's cancel and let's check in our bottle sketch what size so the, the overall size of the bottle is 28 millimeters times 2, which is 56 millimeters. So we need our we need to move the second shaft at least 56 millimeters away, otherwise the two bottles will be clashing. So let's um, let's do that. Let's move it exactly 56 millimeters. So the two bottles are actually touching at the start, and we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, uh, I actually it appears I've moved it in the X direction as well. So let's turn that off. And now we can intersect the two bodies, and now it helps to uh, have them as different colors because that will affect the color of the result. So we hit the Combine button now, and the base is this solid and the tall body is this solid. We can say then we want to intersect the two and say OK. OK, now is this achievable or not? Let's have a look. If we rotate this manually, see actually possibly those bottles are too close together, but as we rotate it here, you'll see well, one bottle is rotating one way and the other is rotating the other way. I think those are too close, to be honest. But let's hit uh, simulate and let's just see uh, what we've got here. I'll save this part file. We can only simulate the bottles that are moving in one direction rather than both directions at the moment. Let's have a look. There's the bottle in one direction, it's rotating. So actually, if you look at that, if you look at the 
space that's available for the second bottle there. This does look like it makes sense. They're both going to be sort of rotating um, towards each other. And it doesn't look like we have a clash there. One way that we could test this, if we wanted to, is we could actually use our new tool. We could save it in this position um, and, and check the two assemblies on top of each other. So if I hit this button to save the assembly in the current position, and hit yes, and we'll call this uh, group group assembly forward I'll just call it group forward now here's our assembly with the bottles moving forward which we can use again let's close that let's close that and then let's open the reverse shaft so let's open the base component of the reverse shaft and let's do a simulation on this one and then we'll call that group reverse and we'll assemble those two assemblies together. So if I drag this here, let's put these bottles something like this. Now what we should have done is we should have checked the rotation there. So we might have to do this, <laughs> might have to do this again. But if I set this to be, let's see the rotation here is 1800 degrees. So if I save this off with that rotation there, 1800 and save this this is going to be called group reverse let's close that we'll come back to that later let's open up the uh, forward shaft and let's simulate that again So if I can get exactly 1800 degrees here, like the other one, like so, and then I can save this one off and call this group forward. Group forward and let's overwrite it. Okay, now if we were to assemble group reverse into group forward, let's try hitting place here, then we'll be able to see what the bottles look like side by side. It's group reverse, so let's copy this one. And let's paste it into group forward. Okay, and we've got this other assembly in here I want to put this on zero zero so I'll just use my inventor shortcut here for ground and root component and then if I set the if I unground this assembly and set the eye property so that it's actually positioned 56 millimeters forward in the Y offset There we are, and let's ground it again. Okay, and now I actually want to turn off the display of the shaft because we don't need the shaft in the second one, uh, in the second part that is. Excuse me, the shaft in the reverse one. And let's turn off this original shaft as well. There we are, so that was slightly convoluted, but if we look at this now, we can see that those bottles are actually not touching as they rotate, and uh, we do have some clearance as they move along the shaft. Okay, so slightly convoluted. Of course, we might want uh, a matching shaft on the other side to actually keep these bottles pressed against this shaft here, and that's where We'll, uh, we'll come into that in one of our future tutorials, but for now this is grouping bottles as they move along the shaft. Thanks very much for watching.